Hey guys, so behind me here you can see uh, an Orion XT8i, the IntelliScope. Uh, I've had this for a few years now and I've been packing it up and setting it up a whole lot of times. I've become pretty familiar with the process so I thought I'd give you a quick instructional on how to put together the IntelliScope uh, the, the quick and good way because the instructions can be quite long-winded and a little bit confusing. It's spread across two different instruction manuals. Uh, so I'm just going to break it down into a few easy steps and we'll see how we go. First thing you'll note is that I have the same, the original boxes that these came in and that is my hot tip number one. Definitely hang on to these as long as you possibly can. They are designed to ship all around the world uh, with the styrofoam and, and the double boxes that are included in here. So I have actually, this was delivered from California to me in Canada and then I put it on a shipping container with all my possessions back to Australia all in these uh, in these boxes and it's all held up totally fine so I uh, really recommend hanging on to these boxes so let's open it up and and see what we have now I've got all my screws and bits uh, sorted into bags from the previous uh, previous times I've done this so you can see I've written on some of these bags altitude for instance so I know that these are all the bits that are associated with the altitude adjustment uh, and similarly I've got you know eyepiece rack and handle um, bags so that's uh, the first thing that I would strongly recommend you do is gather up all the pieces and sort them into you know where they need to go so you might need the instruction manual for that for the first time um, but at least just get all the pieces and and set, lay them out nicely so you know what's going to go where okay before we go any further all the tools that we're going to need for this so um, it's pretty much going to come with all the tools you need I don't necessarily have the original ones that came in the box you're going to need Phillips head screwdriver not too large you're going to need Allen keys, I've just got my a little set here of them, pliers, I've actually got the original wrench that came in the, uh, came in the box, this is a handy one with three different sizes, um, and you will need a level as well. Uh, you could potentially use your phone instead of a level, and a couple of optional things, I've got some electrical tape, you probably won't need that, um, but I will in my instance. Um, and then I've just got a uh, socket set here with the ratchet. Whoop! Don't need that happening. I'm gonna start off this triangular base. This is the piece that is going to sit directly on the floor. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to screw in uh, little feet into these the screw holes in the three corners and we're just gonna screw those in there. Basically there's three pieces that look like this, probably about an inch or so long, about 30, um, uh, 25 mils, uh, and then these largish uh, silver screws with the Phillips head. Um, so pretty straightforward. We're just going to screw those right in. Just going to pop that through there, put that in there, take my screwdriver and. Get these nice and tight so that these feet don't spin. There we go. Nice and firm. All right. Base done. Next step. We are going to attach this central, this is gonna be the, the center piece of our, our bracket. Um, and these two side pieces. So we're gonna attach all of these together. There's going to be a side that has this sticker in the corner and then also this metal thread. This is the part that is going to be the inside. So it's going to be facing towards the tube, the inside of the, uh, the mount. There's three pre-drilled holes on both sides uh, of this wood. And similarly, we're going to have three pre-drilled holes in each of these side pieces. And Pretty straightforward. We're just gonna line them up. Uh, one thing to note when you're doing this, these stickers that say 
SkyQuest or Intelescope, anything with stickers is going to face out because obviously Orion wants their, uh, <laughs> wants their logoing and everything facing out, not in. So uh, just as long as these are facing away from this central piece, you'll be good to go. So these are 50 millimeter, about two inch uh, black screws with a uh, Allen wrench head. That's what we're gonna need for this step. I'm just gonna line, line this up. No washers or anything needed for this, nice and simple. Now the key here is don't over tighten. You want to pretty much tighten it 90%. Um, so it's still fairly firm and holds together, but do not tighten all the way or you're gonna have real problems in the next step. Just make sure you're lined up all the time. And we'll do the next one. So again, I've got my SkyQuest sticker. That's going to obviously go up now. So line it up. Again, with this. Okay. So, you can see that's kind of holding together, but we've got some play in there, uh, and that's pretty good um, for the next step. So the next step is going to be to attach the, the round base plate. So this is going to be the plate that attaches to the frame. And then that triangular piece that we had earlier is going to attach to this round piece. So first things first, we need to attach uh, this frame to our round base. So to do that, we're going to need to flip this on its side. You're just going to need something to hold the base up off the ground because these holes will not line up uh, in that orientation. This needs to sit up a little bit in order to reach. So just whatever spare piece of wood or whatever you've got lying around. I've got a uh, box of nails here. That'll work just fine. Just prop it up a little bit. And so there are two sides to this. Yours won't have this white piece on there. So the way that you're going to distinguish which side is which, because they look exceedingly similar, except for that little white piece. So perhaps you've spotted the difference. Next to this square hole, there is a tiny little pre-drilled uh, circular hole just here. And I'll see if I can give you a better close up of it there. So that is only on one side, that, uh, that pre little pre-drilled hold. That is the side that needs to go down, okay? So up here, you should have the six pre-drilled holes, center hole, square hole, and that's it, okay? Pre-drilled hole, hole is gonna face down away from this base. Uh, so now you're just gonna, line it up. So obviously these, I've got these two holes down here. That's not going to work because it needs to line up with this, this two holes up here. So pretty obviously I just need to turn this and, and I've still got six more of these screws, these 50 millimeter ones. That's what I'm going to use that on here. So this is Probably the most finicky part of the procedure. So, box of nails, not enough. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use that triangular base to get a little extra height. And then there we go, now I can line that up nicely. So it was important to keep a little bit of play in that previous step because it just makes this part so much easier if you're able to angle these parts here just a bit to help you with this because it, it can be quite finicky. And I can go ahead and tighten this pretty much all the way. And we'll come back and do some finishing touches at the end, but pretty much make that pretty tight. So I can pretty much get rid of the, uh, the step now and just screw these right in there. OK. 
Okay, so now we're just going to go back over them and make sure everything is nice and tight. We don't want any play here at all anymore. And then similarly, you can stand this up now. Um, we're going to go back and tighten these guys. Don't want any play anymore. Beautiful, nice and firm. All right. So yeah, what I like to do at this point now is go ahead and attach the, the handle right here. And you can attach the eyepiece rack at this point as well. Um, in the instruction manual, it tells you to do this much later. I don't really see why. It makes it a lot easier to pick this thing up and move it around, which uh, we will need to do. All right. So the first thing we'll put in is the handle and that's, uh, you're going to need, uh, so these are silver 35 millimeter bolts and they have a little washer that comes with them. Um, so it's about one and a half inches. Um, and basically we're just going to get our handle here. The Orion logo needs to go up, not down. So it's going to be in this orientation. Um, and we're going to Take this, poke it through here, make sure you got that washer on there, and we'll just finger tighten it for now. And we'll grab the other one for the bottom. Okay, lovely. Now I am, I'm just gonna use my little uh, socket set here, but you could obviously use the wrench that comes in the set. Okay. So, eyepiece rack. So we've got the, just these two really short little black, black screws uh, with a Phillips head. They're about 15 millimeters. Um, or it's about half an inch, I guess. Um, so, uh, we're just going to grab our Phillips head here, grab our eyepiece rack, um, and what you can do is just screw these in to begin with. Uh, screw them in probably about 70% of the way into these pre-drilled holes here. Get that out of the way. So you want to leave a bit of a gap. So hopefully you can see there's a bit of a gap that I've left on those screws there. Um, and with, because it's got like a kind of a lock, lock and key mechanism here. So what we're going to do is we can put the uh, put it through the big hole and then just slip it down into the small hole and that's not going to go anywhere and you can easily remove this now so I probably put these in a little bit further than I really needed to so now I can easily just pull this on and off at will um, which I like to do because I don't always need that it can be a bit of an annoyance when I'm carrying this around outside. So very handy just to be able to take it on and off. You do also have the option of tightening these down all the way. Um, uh, and then you can uh, hold this in place permanently uh, if you're not really moving it around. So up to you. I like to keep mine loose. I'm just gonna keep this somewhere else for now because like I said, it's not, not really doing much for us, but we'll keep those screws there. So we are now going to attach our triangular base. Again, this is the part that's going to sit on the ground. Um, and it's also time to start uh, installing some of our electronics. What we're going to do first thing is put this back on its side. And we're going to start using these holes here. So we need to grab the uh, azimuth decoder board. Um, so that one 
is going to be this, the smallest of your three boards that you've got. So, very small, it's got one screw hole here, and it's got the large circular hole at the other side, um, and it's pretty small. So it's pretty straightforward, it obviously needs to line up with these holes, so we're just going to put this square through here, and remember I said that there was a pre-drilled hole here earlier, well now it's time to use that. Um, and I should have that, so really short little uh, silver screw, uh, again about half an inch with a Phillips head, little wood screw, and we're just going to whack this in place, just make sure that that hole, get my finger out of the way, the holes line up nicely, that's going to be really important that you've got a good alignment there. Well, we're going to have to do this again later if you're not quite right there. So with this screw here, you want it just tight, right? So that's not quite tight enough. We don't want any movement. But if you go over tightening it, then you're going to have a real, um, real problem with spacing that's going to mess things up. So that's not moving anywhere. I'm just going to see if I can back it up a little bit. Yeah, tiny bit of play. So. That's the one there. Just, just tight. Super important little trick there. Alright, so now we are going to attach our triangular base. So remember, these black feet we attach, this is going to go directly on the ground, so this, the, the white little bits here are going to face up. Um, so the first thing we're going to need is this long uh, screw, um, or sorry, bolt I should say. Um, where just the top third or so has a thread, and then uh, no thread on the bottom third, the uh, bottom two thirds. Uh, you've got a little nut that comes with it, and you've got these two large uh, washers. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take one washer, put it straight on there. Then we're going to come from the bottom, put it straight through this central hole here. Okay. So we have something that looks like that. Now this actually kind of grabs a little bit on its own, which is nice, it's not, not just going to drop straight down. Uh, it's a really nice snug fit. Okay, so now we have the, uh, we're going to put the disc in next, alright? Um, so this disc uh, has two sides, one with a rubber exterior and one that doesn't have that. So super important, you want this rubber to face up. Okay, very, very important. So I'm just going to pop that, oops, just going to pop that on there like that. So again, the rubber's facing up. That's what we should see. Um, then we've got this bushing, brass bushing. Uh, this piece right here, it's got a kind of a wide base. So you're going to stand it up in that orientation. So much for this holding in place. So I'm just going to hold it now. <laughs> and I've got my finger over there. And I'm just going to put that bushing right on there. It needs to find center. So just move it around until it kind of finds its place. And you can see that all spins nicely now. Um, and I can't move that. Nice and solid. So that's in, in its little nook there. I'm just going to slide. this straight through the central hole. So, there we go. So you've got to be exactly level, or it won't go in nicely at all. Go in there and push that back up. Okay, now we've still got that one washer left and a little nut. So, as you might have guessed, we're just going to go washer. We're going to go nut. So this is where we're going to use our pliers and the wrench that came with the box. So I'm going to use my pliers to hold this here. I'm going to use the uh, relevant wrench and uh, I'm just going to start tightening this nut. What I want to do 
is find the point at which this, the washer underneath here, just has no play in it. So I'm going to loosen this. Okay, and that. So here I have no play left in that washer. I've just turned it a smidge. So now, again, we're not done once we have no play. What we need to do, this is super important, and the first time I set this up, I actually had this wrong, and I was troubleshooting for a long, long time before I figured out that this was my problem. So I strongly recommend you get this part right. So uh, no play is only half the job. So once you get there, you then need to move it a quarter turn tighter than that to make sure the spacing is correct. So I want this wrench to, I guess, be on an angle like this when I'm done. Make sure that you've got your pliers firmly on there, that you don't lose the grip. There's that quarter turn. Okay, super important little trick there. Alrighty. So, this is our base now. Pivots, if it has a bit of a screech like that, that's just fine. Um, mine does that. When I get it out in the field, it doesn't really do that anymore. I couldn't really tell you why it does that. Um, in here, but not out there. Uh, and if you want to be sure, you can always check, uh, look through the gap here and just make sure that you can see that, that uh, metal disc with the rubber. Make sure that it's spinning at the same rate as the uh, triangular base, which it is, and you should be all set to go. Alrighty. Beautiful. Now we are actually going to move on to the altitude components. Uh, we're actually just going to put in the bumpers here. So that's going to be these, uh, these pieces that are going to sit in here and it's going to stop the tube from basically whacking the sides. So got four of these bumpers here uh, with Allen, Allen uh, screws on there. Um, so again, there is a direction to these, so you can see that that side is slightly beveled, whereas that side is flat. Make sure the flat side goes against the wood and the beveled side is going to face out. So I'm just going to line, or well, I'm just going to pop this through. I need to turn it a little bit because it is threaded in there. And then I can just start putting that on. And then I'll grab my Allen wrench here and I can just finger tighten that and use the Allen key to hold it in place. Done. And we're just going to do that times four. Okay. Good stuff. Make sure these are nice and snug. You don't want any play in that. Um, next, we can install um, the encoder board protector, which is also a little bumper. So this is a smaller bumper. It's probably about a quarter of the size of the, the other ones we just used. There's only one of them. And we're going to have another one of these short little silver Phillips head screws, quarter inch. But that one is going to go, hopefully, uh, you can see there's just a little uh, pre-drilled hole just up here. Oops, just here. Um, so that's where this is going. Grab my screwdriver and just allow that in again, nice and firm. There we go. Okay, that's all our bumpers installed there. So now we're going to install the altitude uh, electronics the encoder board there. So here is the altitude encoder board. Now this one has the metal disc affixed to it. Um, so again, there's one rubber side, one just metal side. Um, and so very easy to tell this one apart from the azimuth board because, like I said, the the disc is already affixed on there and then you've got your jack on the bottom so um, it's going to be pretty obvious with this one that um, 
So there's there's just a wooden hole, and then on the other side there's a white um, kind of threaded hole. This won't even really fit in here, so make sure that you're just going straight through the wooden hole only, where you put that bumper uh, that we just installed on the one side. Um, so we've got these uh, two more of these little silver, gr uh, silver quarter inch uh, Phillips head screws, and we've also got these two little nylon washers that correspond to them. So what we should actually do is take this out and we're just going to put the screws uh, through here first. So remember it's going to go in like that so the screws are going to have to go in this way. Oops. Let's pop those down and then we'll just pop these nylon washers. These are a really snug fit so just give them a bit of a shove Again, there's going to be another trick to the level at which you tighten this. So, don't go all the way. Okay, so what we are looking for, obviously that's too loose. Um, but we do still need that this whole board needs to be able to move up and down. If you look on the, um, on the board itself, the, the um, holes that the screws go in are long, they're a bit elongated. Um, that is for a reason. This board does need to be able to move up and down. So we want it tight so that doesn't happen or it falls out. That. Um, but we don't want it too tight that the thing can't move at all. So this is a delicate balance. It's just a little bit of trial and error to find the right spot. We just want to find the point at which just moves. So now that's too tight, we can't, I can't move that at all. Or it needs to move a little bit freer than that. There we go. Alright, so now we are going to attach the uh, last of our boards here, which is just the connector board basically. Um, so this is the thing where the altitude and azimuth boards are going to meet. Um, so it's going to go on the opposite side to your altitude stuff there. Alright, so the single, um, so the, the two jacks are going to face in and they're going to face down, in and down, right? Uh, and then this is just going to go through that square hole there. And we've got four little screws for that somewhere. No washers this time. Just some wood screws. Again, it's these little silver quarter inch Phillips heads that we've got seen a few times now. We're going to have two of these telephone style cables, a long one and a short one. We'll start off with the short one. So it is going to go in the altitude and uh, importantly it's going to be the, the nearer one to you in this orientation, just like that. Um, and then the long one, and this is going to be, sorry I think I said at altitude, that's the azimuth there. Um, and then the altitude one is just going to clip in on the altitude side and then up here. So now in your box you should have received a whole bunch of these white things which work great. Unfortunately I've since lost them with all the packing up and, and rebuilding that I've been doing. So I still have this one so I'll use that. It somehow managed to survive a little better than the rest. Um, so we'll pop that in there and then that's where I've got my electrical tape to do the same thing. Um, you'll probably not need this so I'll just set this up and meet you back here when I'm done but I'll you'll know, get an idea of um, where to put those cable holders. Really the last thing we have to do, and this is a pretty important step, 
is install the vertical stop. This knob, a little thumb screw on it, um, and it comes with these three washers, uh, two big ones and one small one. You're going to have to play with this. Uh, the spacing here is super important. Um, and it's going to vary depending on uh, just your exact setup, exactly how you screwed everything in and everything. This is the main uh, troubleshooting uh, issue, I would say, is that the vertical stop is not installed correctly. So this is where the level is going to come in handy. So into this metal thread is where this thumb screw is going to go. It's going to need some combination of these washers. The manual, I think, suggests using one big one and one small one. Um, uh, I've seen some people use all three. I've seen all sorts of stuff. For me, I've actually found that the two big ones is a good spacing. So I'm just going to start with that and I, we'll just see how we go. So I'm just going to put these, those two um, metal washers onto there and just screw this in. Okay, nice and firm. What we want to do is install the tube of the telescope so that it is sitting level. I have to interject for a second. The level method is good and you should check the level, but it's not going to be sensitive enough to tell the difference between, you know, the thickness of those washers. So what you're going to need to do, I would recommend is just use one of the big ones and one of the small washers. Uh, to start with and then you'll need to take it out into the field and align it to know exactly which washers to use and I'm going to cover that off in my next video about alignment so I will uh, link that below. I guess the main thing to know about this is that the side with the knob here is going to face towards the back of the uh, of the base with that frame in it. Um, yeah. So just gonna bring this over and just lower it down into position, preferably without breaking everything. There we go. Okay, now we can go ahead and just install the knobs to secure this into place. So one of them has the white white nylon part and one of them doesn't. So the one that doesn't is going to go into the right hand side here where there's just a metal thread and then where there's the white nylon on this side. I'm being careful because it's not actually a fix right now. The intelescope side where the white hole is, is where the white is going to go. White to white, gray to gray. And just tighten that in place. This is where you can also check that you've installed the altitude encoder board correctly. You want to see that when you tilt this thing, um, that everything, uh, the disc inside there rotates with it. It's not slipping and that looks beautiful. It's, uh, it's moving at the exact same rate as the tube. So that means we installed that correctly as well. All right, we're pretty much there. A um, couple finishing touches, I guess. Um, we will install our finder scope. And that is pretty much it. So you can see one, when I've got the, uh, the telescope on here, it doesn't really screech anymore. So don't know why that happens. All right, guys, so the last thing to do now is get your hand controller and your coiled cable and pretty straightforward we are um, you'll have a piece of velcro that you can choose where you want to attach it where the hand control is going to go mine's obviously already on there because i've done this before so for me it's right here I just put it right next to the port it's very straightforward take one end of the cable plug it in to the larger hole and you go pop this one in In you go, and just on your Velcro. Um, so I will be doing future videos uh, where I show you how to collimate this thing and how also to align it out in the field. Um, so stay tuned for those and I'll link those um, uh, just here. Thanks very much guys, 
and uh, enjoy your new scope and as always clear skies.